We're not at war with Iran yet. What we know so far is that Israel says they will respond to Iran at a time and in a manner of their country's choosing. This came from IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari while speaking at a military base in central Israel earlier today. He said, quote, we cannot stand still from this kind of aggression. Iran will not get scot-free scot from this aggression, uh, which is incredible gaslighting going on here because everyone seems to have forgotten that Iran's embassy was attacked by Israel with 16 people killed, including innocent civilians. But somehow Iran is the aggressor. And, you know, in fairness, the world is telling Israel to just let it go and cool it. Clearly, the, the world knows that Israel got what was coming to them, and Iran was really measured in that. No one died. They only hit military airfields. But, of course, the Western leaders can't say that. And certainly the ones who want war won't say that. Instead, it's Israel is the victim. Israel is the victim. And now the United States has said, we're going to sanction Iran for their bad behavior. So that's the latest that has come out. The U.S. has said we're going to hit Iran with sanctions for hitting Israel back in a showy airstrike that hit their military uh, airfields, their, their runways. No one died. But nonetheless, even though Israel bombs an embassy, which has never been done, it is completely against any sort of diplomatic relations or just it's completely against the concept of having embassies. Israel then goes and bombs the embassy, kills 16 people, including civilians. But Israel's the victim. Israel's the victim. And Iran is the bad guy. Um, you know, but hey, Israel, don't don't hit back, please. And don't cause a war if you can. But Israel is sitting there thinking, but but war is what we're trying to cause. You know, we, <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. We tried to start a war when we hit their embassy. They didn't go for it. So now let's hit them again and see if that will trigger a war. So if Israel hits Iran, Iran has now come out and said, anyone who attacks our land will face punishment and the era of hit and run is over. The Zionist entity must know that we have imposed a new rule to respond to every aggression. Any action by the Zionist entity against us will be met with greater force than last Saturday's operation. That came from the Iranians. Um, so the Biden administration is, you know, uh, pointing at Israel, I mean, at, at Iran, handing over sanctions, and they're celebrating what they claim is the coalition halting a regional war. But Israel is emboldened. You know, they think their new co coalition with strange bedfellows, Saudi Arabia, Jordan and the Emiratis, will protect them. When in reality, those countries were just trying to prevent destabilization in the region when they're growing in wealth, because war creates poverty, they don't want to be poor. Jordan has come out saying that they're going to shoot down any missile that goes over their airspace. They don't care who fired it. Um, Israel is also emboldened by the fact that everyone in the West is condemning Iran for their spectacle, rather than condemning Israel for putting us on the brink of World War III and continuing to threaten to do so. Rather than actually going after Israel saying, you really need to, to quit. You got what was coming to you. You hit their people. 16 people died, civilians died, their embassy was blown up, they hit you back in a spectacle, it wasn't anything more than that, you got what was coming to you, cool it off, no more from you. Um, there's just a lot of posturing going on, a lot of, well, you're going to be alone if you hit Iran, which we all know is not true. Uh, but Israel's, you know, never the bad guy, it's always Iran. Here's the British Secretary of State, David Cameron, saying what Iran did was reckless, but then when asked what would Britain do, he basically says, well, we, we, we would do much worse. Watch this. A reckless and dangerous thing for Iran to have done. And I think the whole world can see all these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there okay. in black and white. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, you know, we would take the very strong action. And Iran would say that that's what they did? Well, what they did, as I said, was a... So Massive attack. So no, they were right think... to respond, but they overreacted, is well, that what you're I, saying? I'm, what I'm saying they is that the, right atta the, attack, the attack they carried out was on a very large scale, much bigger than but people did they have accepted. they right to respond? Well, countries have a right to respond when they feel they've suffered uh, an aggression. Of course they do. But look at the scale of that response. Had those weapons not so been they shot right down, to respond, but they there, just could have been, there could have been thousands of casualties, including civilian casualties. I think that's a really important point to take into account. They knew that they would be shot down. They know that Israel has an Iron Dome. Everybody knows that. That's not a secret. But he's sitting there saying, but had they not, 
had the Iron Dome failed completely, had we not shot down some of these drones and some of the weapons, they used their slower stuff, so they knew that it could get blown out of the sky. They expected that. They knew this was just a spectacle. But they did enough overwhelming of the Iron Dome to ensure that they did actually get some hits in. Again, hits that killed no one. Hits on runways. And David Cameron, the Secretary of State of Great Britain, is sitting there saying, well, I mean, this is just unacceptable. So he's clearly itching for a war. There's a lot of people who are. Now let's go to what the Iranians have to say. The Iranians, um, they, they're they speaking at the UN about their decision. This is just a clip from, they did a big 12-minute, just over 12-minute speech, but I just want to play about a minute and a half for you. This is what they had to say. Last night, in response to the Israeli regime, recurring military aggression, particularly its armed attack on 1st April 2024 against Iranian diplomatic premises, a defense of Article 2nd of the Charter of the United Nations, the armed forces of the Islamic Republic of Iran carried out a series of military strikes on Israeli military objectives with dozens of missiles and drones. Iran's operation was entirely in the exercise of Iran's inherent right to self-defense as outlined in Article 51 of the Charter of the United Nations and recognized by international law. This concluded action was necessary and proportionate. It was precise and only targeted military objectives and carried out carefully to minimize the potential for escalation and prevent civilian harm. Madam President, we thank those members of the Council who condemned the Israeli armed attack against our diplomatic premises in Syria. Regrettably, in this chamber, certain members of the Council, including the US, UK, and France, has chosen once again to turn a blind eye to reality and overlook the root causes contributing to the current situation. Last night, in response to the Sorry, Israeli regime- Sorry, let me just regime, go ahead and stop that there. Um, so look, you know, nothing they said there was wrong. Well, actually, I take that back. Um, they said that this concluded, this concluded action was necessary and proportionate. It was precise and only targeted military objectives and carried out carefully to minimize the potential for escalation and prevent civilian harm. Um, I would say it wasn't proportionate. I would say that it was, it was, um, I think they were, it, they were definitely within their right to defend themselves by taking out military targets. In Israel, if they're going to be bombed in airstrikes by Israel, then it's fair for Iran to go back and take out their c capability to conduct those types of airstrikes. And that's what they did. They targeted their airfields. They targeted the runways of those airfields, which would be theoretically the ones used to take out, you know, to, to conduct airstrikes against Iranian targets. So I think that is fair and necessary. Proportionate, though, um, what is proportionate? Israel killed 16 people. Iran killed none. Now, I am not at all saying that I want them to go and kill 16 people, you know, tit for tat, an eye for an eye. But what they did was, was uh, I wouldn't use the word proportionate. I would say that they were more, they were responsible. They were, it was certainly wasn't proportionate because it wasn't eye for an eye. So, but it was, it was better than that, right? They were being responsible. They were being, uh, they had care for human life. They, again, they said that they wanted, to they wanted to minimize the potential for escalation to prevent civilian harm. So they weren't looking to wage a lot, you know, they did this in a way that they knew would not cause a war. If they killed anybody, they would cause a war. They don't want a war when then civilians would die. So everything they're doing is, was measured to protect human life. And yet they call Israel the most moral military in the world, right? They say, oh, Israel is the one that uh, it is it takes goes to great lengths to to minimize civilian harm, and yet Israel kills indiscriminately. Thirty three thousand militants is what they're claiming they're going after, and yet they've killed that many civilians. Knowing that very most of them being women and children, they're not targeting the very people that they should be, who they claim they should be targeting, who they claim they are targeting, and then they go and they start targeting. Lebanon and Syria and Iran, you know, they're being 
anything but, I think, the most moral military in the world. And if you're going to say someone is a moral military, then I get, I mean, you'd have to kind of maybe hand that over to Iran. They've been attacked over and over by Israel in a, new, in a number of different ways through sabotage inside the country on their facilities, on their various facilities. And Iran never hits back with anything too aggressive because they're being very measured. They don't want to go to war. They don't want there to be civilian casualties. Even in this retaliation, they ensured that there were no casualties at all, not even military casualties. So, um, you know, again, they didn't kill anyone, but forever the victim. And, you know, that's, uh, that's Israel forever the victim, even when they're the aggressor. Now, here's what Israelis had to say at the UN in response. They were basically saying, oh, no, that is not true. Iran is the, they are the greatest, um, you know, they're always saying the same thing, greatest threat to everything. Iran is. is the world's worst human rights violator, and such a regime cannot hold any UN position. No more red carpet treatment here at the UN. No more appeasement. Today, the Council must take action. Condemn Iran for their terror, trigger the snapback mechanism, and reimpose crippling sanction. Designate the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terror organization. Action must be taken now, not for Israel's sake, not for the region's sake, but for the world's sake. Stop Iran today. Okay, so they're sitting there saying that Iran is the greatest um, threat to everybody and they must be sanctioned, even though Israel was the one that killed people and Iran didn't. It's Iran, Iran, Iran. Now, there's a lot to criticize about the Iranian regime. I'm not a fan of their government. But nonetheless, they're not killing anybody. So uh, Israel calls for sanctions, says, well, if you're on our side, you, you, you enact sanctions. And guess what the Biden administration just announced a couple of hours ago? Sanctions. They're going to be putting sanctions on Iran for how dare you strike back on military um, airfield runways.